Let's see what kind of rocks and gemstones we can find hiking the trails of Grand Canyon National Park. Pretty cool. The views are gorgeous here at Grand Canyon, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And today we're going to figure out what kind of crystals and rocks we can find here. Notice I didn't say rock hound. We're not actually here to collect. We're on a federal park, so that's not allowed. We're just interested in learning what crystals and gemstones are here and the geological conditions that make those possible. But don't worry, I got you covered. I'll make you a deal. If you came to the Grand Canyon and absolutely need to rock hound and collect stuff, at the end of the video I'll let you know a couple locations nearby that do let you collect. Also, spoiler alert, there's a mineral that was actually originally discovered on one of these trails. We're going to see if we can spot it. We call this catch and release rock hounding, by the way, and I've done a little research to narrow it down to the best places to find gems. We're going to explore three trails on the south rim. The first one is the South Kaobab Trail. We're going down about two, three miles here. The second one is the Bright Angels Trail. We're going to go down three miles again here. And finally, we're going to try our luck at the Grandview Trail. So let's start with trail number one, the South Kaobab Trail. Now, here's what it looks like. Here's what the terrain is all about. You really want to head out here early. Um, it's a very popular trail, so it can get crowded. So head out early, bring some protection and plenty of water. Okay, our first rock of interest that we're finding is this chert right here. Chert is full of silica, it'll take a really nice polish in a rock tumbler, all the better if you can find a really nice color pattern as well. I'm also finding a lot of these uh, empty and also filled vugs. Very similar to how a geode is made, a cavity will be left in a rock and then filled up with silica later on. Also tons of shell fossils. Check this out, a freezer right there, you see all those clams in there? Those are all actually fossils. Lots of fossils here because it's basically layers of prehistoric time. We're going to continue along the Kaobab Trail. We're going to find more of these small little um, vugs of chert, cavities of fossils. And as we get to the three mile marker, some of these cavities are filled with crystals. And I'll show you in the distance, way out there, that is... That is our end point. It's called Ua Point. Here's what the view looks like, and it is at this Ua Point where I look down and I find this. Check out those awesome quartz crystals. More and more crystals the further you go. We found our first crystals. Yeah, this is a nice one. Check that out. This is uh, some really nice fully formed points in there, some nice quartz. And this is what happens when those cavities in the rock don't fully fill up with silica. We're left with these clusters of quartz crystals. All right, so that was trail number one, on to trail number two. And by the way, all of these hikes are from the South Rim, and they're like really good day hikes. They take maybe like between three and six miles, so half a day. And if you're like me, your first idea when you look at this thing is like, how can I get to the bottom of it? But if you only got one day, that's not the best idea because that's a 17 mile round trip hike and definitely not recommended for beginners. Or me for that matter, I, I don't really consider myself like some pro hiker. Six miles, eight miles with 4,000 feet of elevation, that's enough for me. Good exercise and great views. Okay, on to our next hike. This is Bright Angel Trail. This is kind of like the flagship trail, the popular one that everybody does. And as we start off the trail, we're already running into some interesting wildlife right here. The reason why I think this trail is so popular is because there's so many opportunities to turn back. There's like a mile and a half marker, a three mile marker. We're going down to the three mile marker today. So we're finding some interesting calcite crystals here, some calcite veining through the host rock, some white chert as well, kind of the same stuff we were finding on the other trail. But at about the two mile marker, I look down and I find this sky blue chert. Check this out, all of this rock is a, is a very light sky blue. Now, me personally, I am always looking for blue rocks. I, I get excited, I, I, I love anything blue. I even found this huge nodule of it right here. Check that out. That's like, if you cut that open, it's probably a geode right there. But if you take a look at this stuff, it's not, it's not like a fully formed agate. It's not transparent. It's very opaque, very cloudy. Now, a lot of this boggy, opaque chert stuff is very typical of what you find in places that used to be prehistoric seabeds or agatized bogs. Check this out right here. These, these cliffs are just breathtaking awesome views on this trail. I can I can see why it's so popular. 
Also on this trail, we're finding a lot of fossils, particularly stromatolite fossils. Stromatolites are basically the fossilized small organisms that lived on the seafloor. You can see them right here, kind of really nicely embedded in this rock. Also, it's not uncommon to find fossils of the actual seafloor right here. Those are, those are like the waves on the sand, fossilized in time. All right, we're passing that two and a half mile marker here. We're gonna keep going. We're finding less of that blue chert here, but at the three mile mark, I look down and I find what I think might be red jasper. Check this out. This is so cool. Finally, a rock that I'm like really familiar with. I'll zoom in so you can get a good look. Check this out. Okay, so this is cool. This is our first sign of jasper, but I'm not quite sure it is jasper. Jasper doesn't really cleave this way. It kind of looks like, like opal or even petrified wood. I don't know, what do you think this is? So, okay, I'm gonna zoom in and I'm just gonna freeze right here. Check that out. Now, it's got the color of jasper, but check out the way that it cleaves. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of either common opal, you see those, see that like white and that brown in there, or it kind of also reminds me of Arizona petrified wood, um, but I don't think that we can find petrified wood in the Grand Canyon. Or maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, it does very closely resemble the petrified wood from Petrified Wood National Forest just uh, northwest of this location. And here I found almost like a nodule of this stuff. Almost like a, a cross section of a limb cast right here. I don't know, I've got my thoughts. Let me know what yours are in the comments. Okay, time to hike back up. And by the way, this hike up is no joke. Okay, on to our next hike. The Grand View Trail. Now, it does start out like all the other ones, but it does level off and get a little bit more green. And by the way, this trail is home to a mineral called Grandviewite. Grandviewite was actually discovered here at the Grandview Mine on this trail. It has since been found in other locations around the world, but it's named after this trail. How cool is that? This is what it looks like. It's this blue crystal that, of course, is associated with copper. Copper mines, azurite, chrysocolla, uh, malachite, that's like what Arizona is known for. Wouldn't it be cool if we could find this stuff? Okay, so let's look around, let's hike. We're gonna look around for large piles of rock that might contain this stuff right here, copper or chrysocolla, anything green, anything turquoise, and anything that could have been a mine. I like what I'm seeing here. Unfortunately, since this is a national park, most of the mines are covered up and blocked off, so I don't think we're gonna find it today. I mean, it would have been even cooler if we found some, but what are you gonna do? So those are the crystals and gemstones that I was able to find at the Grand Canyon National Park. If you can find more, or if there were any ones that I missed, let me know. All right, so one more time, can you collect this stuff? No, but I did promise I'd tell you about some other places nearby. Just south of the park, check out Vale, Arizona for petrified wood, and even further south, check out Obsidian Tank for Obsidian. Rocks, crystals, and gemstones of the Grand Canyon. Pretty cool.